Welcome back everyone to Nanaliza Dunn, our main host Dominic, and we have another match, another 2v2. It's going to be a match on Ravaged. It's going to be between FFC and Thomas versus Sparkles and Leninator. Let's get started. So, this is on 1.6.9.0. That's the thing to point out. This is on the new version where... Why can't I remember the name? Cyclopses. I want to say Goliaths. Cyclopses are no longer overpowered. So... We are going to see tanks from Thomas, but we're not going to see Cyclopses be the game-breaking thing. FFC, on the other hand, going for the spiders, which on this map makes a lot of sense for all the cliffs that exist. Leninator going for Amph bots. Neat. And spiders are also Sparkles' factory of choice. Because, again, cliffs. Amph bots I'm not so sure about. There's water, technically, but you don't really get to use it. It's more just an obstacle that you can't cross. It's basically there so that spiders cannot just go straight through there. Or straight through here. Or, I guess... I guess they can go around the edge of the map, but you don't usually do that. I mean, they're there because they were there in the original, in the StarCraft map this is based off of. But, yeah, you know, it's still. It works for spiders. It's actually a thing, any small map making tip, if you want to make an area that is completely impassable, make it longer than any jump length, while having a hole in it, or maybe not longer than any jump length, you might want to have jumps, but make it a hole with water in it. Spiders can't cross it, and non-spiders can't cross it. Because spiders can't get through there. Anything that goes through water doesn't have the ability to go down the cliffs. And spiders can't go through water. So that works. Anyway. At this point, not a whole lot... This, I mean, not a whole lot is too different here. We have... Oh, Thomas and FFC both going for some spiders. Looks like FFC just donated a few to Thomas. Thomas, on the other hand, wants... To, looks like they're going for more of the mid-game... Mid-game tech going for the Ogres very early on, which is a good idea for the Archer coming in here. Stops that in its tracks. And at this point, that's going to make it easier for the Southwest team to build up. They can go from there, set up a beachhead, or not beachhead, set up a force in the center, then work from there. While at the same time, the Northeast team, they are playing reactively. I mean, they have their own right, they have their red back, but they don't have a whole lot that's actually going to be able to deal with the Ogre. The Ogre is essentially the thing to kill. I mean, that's always how it works with tanks, especially early game. They have one or two units, but those are the unit to kill. Like, you have to kill them. And that's something that's going to be a little bit hard for Northeast to do, for the simple reason that Northeast doesn't have any skirmishes up right now. They are getting a few recluses. Those will help. Getting a few boys, those will help a lot. But ultimately, it's not going to be super effective. Ooh. Hey, Venom! Venom and Flea, together at last! I mean, granted, Venom Flea was always a strategy, but it's honestly, it was always kind of hard to pull off. Stardust, however, not managing to do much. The Ogre managing to get a lot of damage in there, but the Recluse, apparently more accurate than the Ogre, surprisingly enough for how notoriously inaccurate Recluses are, just happened to manage to get rid of that Ogre regardless. So, the Ogre has been beaten on his assault path, but it did leave this Stardust completely destroyed. Thankfully for Northeast team, there's no follow-up force yet coming. None planned, none on the way, but if there were, boy would they be in trouble. Like, these fleas decided to go around the back, which actually they might do, but if they decided to go around the back, just go along here, nothing's going to stop them. Except for the explosions of all these metal extractors and wind generators. Those would stop them. Fleas have a bad tendency of just getting caught with death explosions and dying. As one of the things, if you want to play a lot of spider, you've really got to learn the death explosion. Hold space and X while you're clicking on a building, you'll see the death explosion. The number is the amount of damage, the radius of the radius. Fleas can fire from a range that's far enough away to not get killed by the death explosions, but a lot of times people will just circle around and try to have all the fleas super close. That's a great way to get them killed. Back to the game, though. FFC having a bit of trouble holding on to this hill. The Redback might go down with this if and only if this picket is done in time. No, never mind. The Lotus did its job. Sparkles' commander, actually not sure... If, no, they're, they're going to be fine. There's nothing really stopping them here. The Venom went down. The Flea will not have a chance. I mean, that's a Lotus. Wait, Sparkles is allowing that to happen? That can't be right. There we go. That that makes more sense. Sparkles is commander able to take out the North, the Middle West expansion, probably built with their own, and that's going to be a small problem. As FFC points out in chat, definitely an issue. The Ogre should be able to come in and tear, tear that apart, or the, or the Emissary. Either one would do the trick. There is a Redback on the way, but honestly, I would not recommend that. I think the Ogre is a great idea. I think the Redback doesn't have enough HP to be able to get through the Lotus. All the Lotuses now, really. The swarm of Lotuses. 
And the Emissary is a great idea, because that'll get rid of all the static defenses and allow for basically everything else to be built up on top of that. So, yeah. Emissary's good choice. Actually, that that's forcing Sparkles' commander away. So Emissary is the best choice. Don't even have to kill Sparkles' commander. Just need to threaten them enough. That being said, though, it's clear that Southwest feels a bit of a threat as well, because they're not taking the Southeast. And the Center East is being taken by the Northeast team. The Center is reasonably split, but the fact that this this little depression is not being taken by Southwest is putting them massively on the economic back foot. I mean, Sparkles of Commander doing a bit of reclaim, that's helping, but it's not much. Although there is a Widow! There goes Sparkles of Commander. Now the fleets can actually do their job. I mean, they will die in the process, but of course they will. That just generally happens. Still, though, Sparkles losing their commander to a nice Widow Strike. Though, so, well done there. That's a small blow. I mean, half their storage and four metal per second. But hey, it's not nothing. So now the Weaver's still alive. It can easily go into rebuild. As I mentioned in the last game, you always want the workers alive to rebuild. And the Redbacks coming in here to help get rid of all the fleas coming in. Yeah, that's this, this should be good, actually. This is a good mix of units. Like, the fleas aren't going to be able to do much either. The Redbacks should be able to stop pretty much anything. The recluses, the recluses will be a problem, but there are fleas going already to deal with the recluses. So there we go. Although the recluses... They're a bit too good at helping each other out. The fleas won't be able to get rid of both of them. Gets rid of one, though, and scares off the other. So just get the Weaver in there. Start rebuilding. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Let's. There we go. FFC getting that rebuild on. At the and at the same time, we have Thomas going over to the southeast, getting the Depression expansion. However, that's a lot of boys Leninators got going for them. Now, eight boys coming in here. Mostly Redbacks left to deal with that. Emissaries as well, which will be nice. But the boys... It's a bit harder for the fleas to deal with. At least this number of fleas. You get, you know, two dozen fleas, the boys would die. But half a dozen fleas against half a dozen boys, the boys could just shoot all the fleas individually. And that's enough damage to one-shot the fleas. So, yeah. Well, like most things, really, in this game. Most things will one-shot fleas. Ooh. Nice use of Ogre, though. Bear in mind, Ogre is, like, it's Riot, yes, but it's got so much HP that it does have an easy enough time getting in. Boy slow, stopping it from any further assaults, but still, that damaged the boys enough that they can't do much. Flea's coming in here to finish them off, at least trying, at the very least providing a bit of distraction. Good support coming in there from Sparkles to stop that, but ultimately, it's not going to be enough. The boys are forced back, and with and Emissary doing a fine job taking them out, too. I mean, they're slow units, so it makes sense. But just normally, you don't see things like an Emissary being able to get rid of a force like that just out of the, out of the blue, but yeah. They're slow enough. However, Flea's coming around here to try to get rid of the Emissary, and that won't help. The Ogres are already in position to help support that. I mean, this is just great mixed. This is a great comp composition going for. Like, the Southwest team, they have artillery, they have the riots units, though basically everything's covered. The only thing they don't have covered is if a heavy assault force comes in. A bunch of Hermits would actually be a good idea right now, and that was what was being built up, but it's not going to be doing all that much. Not yet. Not without numbers. Which currently they don't have. I do like the recluses though. That's... Those are harder for the, ri the artillery to deal with. That's another good idea, but unfortunately, again, ogres are really heavy units. They have a lot of HP. The only reason why there's any real shot against them for the boys is that the boys deal enough damage in for each attack. It's like 300 damage per attack. Sorry, 150 per attack, but the slow is so huge as well that it doesn't matter. Geoplan, however, going down to the northwest. And the Commander Leninator almost gone down as well. So, ultimately, not a whole lot's going for them. There is a nice Jin here, however. Oh, that is tricky. Okay, so they got a Jin teleporting into the water. I don't know if they have another Jin that are planning on setting up on the other side to try to teleport up. But, that's tricky. Oh, no, I see what they're doing. Oh, that is nice. So, they got... They got the lobster here. They're going to fire the lobster. So the, the plan of doing is firing the djinn from the lobster into the base, having the teleport beacon down here, which honestly is not the best position because that requires that the units can get over here. But still. Put the teleport beacon back here and then teleporting all their units into the base, into the southwest base from behind. That is brilliant. I want this to work. I really want the game to last long enough for this to actually be pulled off because nothing's going to spot it. Like, no one's looking for it. I know I joked before how this map, the water's decorative, and honestly, it mostly is, but I love it when players pull that off. Or, at least, make use of the water like that at the side. So this is going to be great. Oh, I'm so... 
I'm so excited for that. At the same time, Middle West expansion is actually pretty strong for the Southwest team, so that this lobster strategy is gonna be gonna be kind of necessary because at this point the Southwest has a stronger economy. Northeast has some good reclaim going, but of course reclaim is temporary. It's mostly off of this geo plant, which is almost done being reclaimed. There are still reclaimables along here, but it's not much. It's like 140 metal worth. That lasts in maybe 10 seconds. And at the same time, the front line forces are coming under quite a bit of fire. I mean, this defense has to be held on long enough for there to be actually an army to teleport back into their base. That's the one downside here. If the Jin can't teleport or can't be set up with enough of an army to actually follow up, this might not even work. The Hermit's being forced to go forward. I'm pretty sure that was the force that was planned to go in behind. But no, they're forced to go forward to try to push out all these, all these recklesses, all these redbacks. Maybe get through there, but honestly, there's just the numbers not on their side. Especially since the Hermits got split up a bit. If they can regroup, I could see them possibly coming through here and actually taking care of the Redbacks. But it's going to be tough. Phoenix coming in here, dealing a bit of damage. Not a huge concern. The Redbacks are a big concern, but now that the Hermits have regrouped, that again is not a massive concern. The Recklesses, however, that is the concern. And again, the Lobster is here. The Jin is here. But I don't know how this is going to work because, well, there's nothing being sent to teleport. Oh, the scallops! Okay, that's what's going to happen. Scallop, scallop teleport. Not scallop drop, scallop teleport. Still a clever idea. I like it. Not sure where it's going to teleport to, though. Can... The Jin isn't... Is it going to teleport up there? I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. I think it needs to be launched first. Unless the idea is that they're going to throw... They're going to teleport them into the water... And then launch them with the lobster. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Teleport into the water. Launch with lobster. Okay. This is neat. Not sure how this is going to work. Oh. Wait, is this has this been spotted? I can't tell if this has been spotted or not. I actually can't tell if this has been spotted or not. No, they, they know. They know. They're They're waiting for it. Ah, that's a shame. Oops. Wait, are they? Hang on. No, they're aware of it. Yeah, the... The owl did spot it. And there is a Stardust. Seriously, throw them now. Lobster them now. I don't know why these lobster isn't firing. Because it has to. The Stardust is already being a problem. Actually, terraforming a hole to be able to get the... St is that seriously? Yeah, terra... Putting a Stardust on the water right there. Oh no, Gauss Cannon, even better. Which this which the scallops cannot hit. Oof. Why is the lobster not can I just not shoot that far? Oh, there it is. Okay. Lobstered in. Unfortunately, not quite the right position. And didn't quite get in. All oh, the scallops gone like that. Nothing there worked. Oh, that is a shame. I mean, clearly they were trying to lobster into the main base and was too high. Oh, that had just worked. That would have been amazing, but unfortunately got spotted out too soon. And while Leninator coming in with a bit of a revenge shot, or not a revenge shot, trying to just stop an assault in their main base, still, Thomas, even though they did leave, just, they left? What the heck happened? Oh, that lagged out apparently. FSC fighting 1v2, but in such a massive economic advantage. Like, the entire time this has been happening, FFC has been holding the line up front, making sure nothing can really deal any damage, building up more and more emissaries, and ultimately, putting themselves in a position where they can just go for a push. Now they don't have to worry about the scallop. Well, yeah, there's one scallop left, but they are aware of it. I mean, more scallops could theoretically be on the way. The teleport beacon, the lamp is there. Maybe the lobster's going to go for it again. I don't know. It'd be kind of weird if they did, but they might try. Heck, I don't know. I could... I can maybe see it, but again, it didn't seem to work. Like, it didn't seem to have the height to get in last time. Still, I like the cleverness. Oh, okay, apparently you'd need two lobsters to be able to pull that off. And we actually did see two lobsters come in. One lobster was teleported in to make that happen. But that's clearly not happening right now. Also, the double jump. Did the double jump require the two lobsters at once, or do you have to time it so that one lobster shoots, and then while the unit's in midair, the other lobster launches it while it's flying? I'm not sure how that works. I've never really played with lobsters. And people don't use them very often, but man, am I glad we saw that here. lobster gin combo didn't quite work due to misunderstanding of height. But that would have been amazing. 
Man, I would have loved to see that really get pulled off. See, that's the thing to bear in mind. That's, that's a strategy on this map. Other than the fact that lobsters are a bit of a pain. But yeah, I don't know how that works exactly. I don't know if how it's set up. It, it, so, do you have two lobsters that you then like? You just fire them together, and that makes it work. I don't know. I find that strange. I mean, maybe you know, terraform would show up. That's the thing. I was about to th say if you could terraform a small platform and then fire it up, but I don't know. Like, I thought maybe it would work. Or, again, jump the gin in there. That'd be the easiest thing to do, is just use the lobsters to knock the gin into the into the base, and then teleport to the gin. And at that point, you're good. Okay, okay so, we can, so it does sound like you have to you have to fire it in midair. So using it on the gin would be the way to go. So you, you can knock the gin up, and then as the gin's flying, you hit it again with the other lobster, knocks it into the cliff. And then you teleport. Because at that point, you'd be able to teleport. The scallops would arrive in the base. And they wouldn't have to be individually thrown into the base. And then you got scallops. You basically have... I mean, appropriate to this map. You basically have warp prisms warping in units. I mean, you literally have a teleporter that's putting units from your base into theirs. That's basically what warp gates are. With a warp prism. So, exact same strategy. On a StarCraft map, too. Where that strategy would work reasonably well. Actually, it would work very well, come to think of it. I thought I've played Zelnaga Caverns very much. I also played StarCraft 2 very much anyway, but... What little I have played, I haven't played much Zelnaga Caverns. Warp Gate strategies are fun, though. And that's basically what this was. So yeah. Neat. Didn't quite work, but a cool idea nonetheless. Anyway. That's gonna be it. Oh, apparently lobsters can just hold things in the sky. Hmm. Well, people are talking about widget ideas in chat, but anyway, that's going to be it for me tonight, so thanks for watching. I... I'm going to have more requests. If you want requests, just... I think Discord is usually a fairly reliable way of DMing me for that stuff. So, yeah. Find me on that. Basically, I'm on the 0k Discord, which is the 0k chat. So, if you want that, that's cool. I mean, I can get that through Twitch as well. People have DM'd me in various ways. Twitter, through Twitch. So, yeah. I don't really care as long as I find it. Anyway, thanks for watching. And until next time, have a good night.